All right, welcome everybody to episode seven of the Writer's Cut. Uh, I'm your host, Edwin Acevedo, and I am here with, uh, you know, one of the guys that I wanted to uh, chat up with for a long time. Uh, you know, a great writer, uh, you know, I think one of the uh, the best YouTube hosts there is in this space. Uh, Bancroft, what's going on? Uh going great great to be here thank you for inviting me and thank you for uh say thank you thank you for those kind of things i know we normally a little bit uh there's a little bit of tension you know between the hard line and my show but uh all of that's under the bridge water under the bridge for tonight yeah. we're just yeah, talking it's a, writing it's a, it's tonight. Fun. tough fun it's uh yeah. all jokes uh you know if i look like i'm uh typing out notes here just ignore that completely <laughs> just nothing's happening down here no you're all good <laughs> uh well, first off, I'm going to go and tweet this out to everybody, let them know that we're live. So why don't you go and give everybody a little quick introduction of yourself and uh, who you are and what you're working on. Yeah, so I am Michael Bancroft. I am the writer, creator, artist of The Lucent. That's my series. I've been working on this thing for, God, over a decade now. But, you know, I'm not a, I don't come from a professional writing background. Uh, I've, you know, I've done a bit of copywriting and stuff here, but uh, this is all, this has, you know, been my sort of side passion. And, and uh, so um, this is all very new to me as a writer to actually have sold things and have people read it and have them interested in it. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much who I am. Uh, and now all of that is kind of snowballing. And, uh, you know, I'm working on uh, lots of things uh, for the future, uh, follow-up books. And I think that's what this discussion is about, writing the uh, follow-up to your first book and, and then onwards and stuff like that. So, yeah, that's where I'm at at the moment. Yeah. So, uh, like I said, uh, you know, for, for anybody who's kind of missed out on, on these uh, Writer's Cut episodes, uh, Basically, I like to uh, link up with another fellow writer or creator and kind of go over process. Each episode has mm -hmm. a specific theme. Uh, that we've done six previous ones. Uh, we've touched on a lot of different things and a lot of my projects along the way. This time we're talking sequels. So obviously, uh, you know, I was fortunate enough to do a sequel called uh, yep. The Ace Volume 2. It was uh, successfully crowdfunded. Uh, you know, everybody's uh, got their copies that order it, thankfully. And... Uh, yeah, so uh, we'll go a little bit through that as we kind of talk process. And I guess the first thing that, uh, you know, I want to go through is, you know, we, we all have these ideas of this initial project. And you don't know if it's going to go well or not or kind of what, uh, how it's going to go. But then, you know, you end up successfully crowdfunding it. It makes a couple of bucks. And now you have to deliver a sequel. <laughs> so Yeah, uh, well, lucky, luckily for me. <laughs> Yeah, no, that is pressure. That is pressure because when I started, you know, my book is not what I would have ever thought would be traditional comic book fair that people would really resonate to. So it came as a, the biggest surprise of all to me was that, you know, a large number of people were actually interested in the Lucent and my story. So with that comes a lot of pressure, obviously, to follow it up. Thankfully, like I said, I've been doing this now, writing this story for over a decade. So um, the the rate at which it's coming out has nothing to do with me not having any story. I have more story than I can possibly put out. The problem is, you know, I'm doing this as I'm I'm drawing it. I'm, you know, I have a day job and all this sort of stuff. So it's more my fault. So I actually don't have an issue of, Oh, where it's going to go next. Oh, I know where it's going. I know where it's going many, many books in advance. Actually, I have to know that because of the kind of story it is. I have to drop in hints and Easter eggs along the way. So, um, but the pressure is real because the people who liked the Lucent really liked it and they want, they want something good uh, to follow up. And they've been waiting an obscene amount of time to get their hands on it so uh i have to deliver i have to yeah well, it's, uh, it's the kind of pressure we like uh i don't know you, you said you you have like a long-term plan for this uh you know mm -hmm. i'm mostly uh, working on the ace i've had basically like a, an outline so basically i yeah. i i write down a lot of different notes and, and different things for for each kind of volume that i see 
And then, you know, eventually I have to boil it down and get into the nitty gritty of it. But for yeah. me, uh, volume two is actually one of the easiest things I ever wrote probably to this day. I just felt like I had such an understanding from going over the, the script for the first ace. And then I mm -hmm. ended up doing like a short story for like uh, Sims uh, Red Label Anthology series that did like an origin for David. And, and, and after writing that, it just became so easy. This thing that flowed a couple of days. I had the whole thing written down. I wrote the main story, the backup, and the epilogue. It, it all just like came out uh, as like probably the, the most creative point I've had uh, in this time as I've been a writer. So I, I was super it's, fully locked in for this. To me, that says that you've planned it out. You've you know the characters' motivations. You know what world they exist in. All that sort of stuff. When you know all that stuff, when you're familiar with it. It, yeah, and and you've set up a story that is self, you know, consistent within the logic of itself and everything. That's how it. That's how I found it happens as well. Anytime I get stuck and things get hard, that's because there's some part of it that I've sort of mentally been ignoring uh, or yeah. haven't fully fleshed out. So I've had the same experience with a lot of stuff where, yeah, once I turn that tap on everything just starts flowing out because it's all it's already kind of all in there all i have to do is commit it to the page um and that yeah man i tell you that is the, the most fun you can do making comics in my experience is that writing process world building and actually fleshing out the story like that i love it it's it is it's its own reward really yeah definitely uh and, and we will get into uh, in a future volume about uh, when it's hard to write, because <laughs> I actually had that for volume three for a bit. So, you know, it's always interesting yeah. to see each kind of chapter brings its own kind of challenges and stories. But as you can see, uh, sharing uh, the PDF of the uh, Ace Volume 2, you know, beautiful, beautiful cover right there. Pat Maxton. Just beautiful. Beautiful cover. word colors beautiful by uh, Theo Gonzalez. Uh, he ended up coloring the first Ace book, so he did this uh, also. Uh, so there's the uh, comic. And yeah, let's get into a little bit of uh, of the Ace. Like I said, love that cover. You got a little credit section here. Every uh, Ace comic, for the most part, uh, has three parts. It's the main story, the epilogue, which will tie into the main story later. And then we have like an origin story. This one takes place of Akula. Uh, we'll only be covering the main story for for the purposes of this stream i'll be doing other streams to cover the uh the remaining stories and uh, as you can see there's uh right off the bat we uh introduced you some new uh characters these are the godless uh these are special kind of uh special forces that have been sent to earth to track down the ace and bring him back to their home planet uh you know it was uh really fun to kind of introduce the the space and different aliens and all this kind of stuff. Uh, you know, for Ace Volume One, it was very much kind of Earth centric, and mm -hmm. uh, we only we only really got introduced to Akula for like a short bit. He, he shows up near the end and goes after Ace. So this one, we we go full out. We go space. We got aliens. We got uh, different uh, characters. Uh, that, you know, the the other book was a lot simpler. It was basically Ace, Akula, and then saw a couple pages with Ace's mom. This one, we got like seven, eight characters that we're like juggling on here. So again, that provides its own challenges for from something a little simpler uh, of yeah. what it was uh, for the Ace. Uh, and why don't you uh, tell me, did you have like many kind of like, did you up your, your like character count? Uh, oh man, you everything that? you're saying is exactly what I did. And I think that's what you need to do. That's what good follow-ups are. And I noticed that in... Um, series on tvs movies it's so rare when a movie sequel is better than the original but when it is it's usually they usually have those components in it so yes absolutely this the the follow-up is that i think i think the first installment should be simple and straightforward because you really the goal is to make people care about the world you set up and the characters that's really you know the main characters but if you start introducing too many elements too many people it becomes a mishmash and it's hard to care about anyone so 
Um, yes. So in the Lucent, in the second book, uh, you know, you're seeing the characters that you met in the first one in new situations now, unfamiliar places. Mm -hmm. You're meeting new important characters uh, and uh, that are, you know, going to join the, the cast, so to speak. Um, yeah, and th that's great. It's funny that, yeah, you know, you say everything that you just said is, is pretty much what painted death will be as well. There we go. Just want to say hail to the chat, everybody who's uh, joined us. Christopher, Aaron, Jaro, Shane, thank you guys for joining us. Please like, share, Fellas. subscribe to the channel. You guys rock. Hell yeah. All right. All right. So as we see here, we introduced the godless uh, showing on Earth. Uh, I absolutely uh, love what Hal did for the colors on this one. Uh, the blue and kind of yellow suits right there, a big homage to like the X-Men. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. I grew up a huge X-Men fan. So anything from like, yeah. uh, you know, like late 80s to like 96, 97. I'm all about. So this is a, was a, nice that time. was my prime comic book yeah. time too. And I uh, also like how in the first two pages we open up on these aliens, and then page three we, we actually meet the Ace. For anybody who uh, didn't read the first book, the the main story ends with Blade with uh, Ace having his blade at Akula's throat. So we're technically going back in time for those two pages. But I love how, mm -hmm. how it all works together. You know, it's page one, page two, and then that's page three. I think it kind of like hits perfectly. You know, you're kind of wondering, you know, am I reading the ace? What's this? And then you see the alien show up and you see ace and it all kind of comes together. And then it's a great yeah, panel. Yeah, it's fun there. to do things like that. I, I also like when a significant amount of time has passed and you already knew the trajectory of a character. They did this in Walking Dead. I don't know if it was the second season or the third season, but you could already see the trajectory of certain characters and then six months or a year had passed. And, you know, they're just that much more proficient at what they're doing. That's a cool thing too. I like those sort of things, but that's interesting. I like that too, where you just, you're a bit, how, all right, how does this fit in? And then you realize, oh, you, you, these guys were there, you know, just yeah. that was already there in the first story. You just didn't see it from their perspective yeah. yet. And it just, catches you up immensely like it brings everything together if you caught it and if you yeah. didn't if you're just if you're just reading this for the first time you know you're not lost you know you're basically you can follow the story from dialogue uh mm -hmm. yeah man uh, how did a tremendous job with the colors uh you know love the artwork by canalis really leveled up on this issue i love that second panel there of akula taking a bite of of uh, ace this is armor and then you know have the uh the, Rico there, who's the leader, ends up shooting Akula. And then right here, he gets put down by uh, by Breck, this big kind of powerhouse alien. You see, it's all, he reminds me a little bit of um, the dudes from uh, Fifth Element in the face, you know? Those, yeah, there's uh, definitely a lot of uh, influences like uh, yeah. Fifth Element. Uh, Starship Troopers is another one. Mm -hmm. uh, the, those characters, like their personalities, are based on a lot of the uh, Starship Troopers characters. Nice. Uh, so we kind Great of movie. play around with a lot of those uh, kind of sci-fi movies and all that stuff. And then mm -hmm. we have, uh, you know, basically we put a sense of urgency on this. You know, have Rico telling Ace that, you know, uh, there, there are more people coming for him and his armor. And, you know, they don't have time to stand around here and, like, you know, get into a fight or anything like you know, he needs to, to trust the armor's instincts and go with him. And then this is where Ace realizes that, you know, his armor basically has like a spider sense. Uh, his armor isn't like a Blue Beetles. It doesn't talk to him. You know, it's not like an, a computer like Iron Man where, where he can have dialogue with it or anything like that. Uh, it's So he's, he's a whole completely he's closer to more like the Dark Hawk armor. So, you know, he kind of realizes, you know, the Spidey sense isn't going off. This guy isn't mm -hmm. BS with me. So, you know, I'm yeah. going to have to make a choice because if he stays there, he's also going to have to keep protecting his mom from, from all these different aliens that, that wanna, want the armor. So, you know, by him going away with them, he's doing two things. He's protecting his mom and he's also trying mm -hmm. to get answers, which he needs. So, you know, we set up that whole like uh, in, in a couple of pages, we kind of set that up that, look, we got to get away from Earth because it's a priority. Yeah. And then, you know, like I say, we come off here. Uh, Breck uh, takes away Akula, 
they have a lot of history, uh, which he kind of alluded through throughout the comic book. See the Man, Ibai really is uh, leveling up. Yeah, he like he, the panels on this, like some of the stuff he did later on with Angelique is just fantastic. And him and Hal made a, just a great team up here. Then you see uh, Desi, who, uh, who's the most important of all these uh, godless uh, characters. Uh, her and Ace start, uh, you know, developing a little bit of a dialogue here in this card to find common ground and start to find out more about her. Uh, you know, he tells her that uh, he he's just kind of disappointed he didn't get to say goodbye to his mom. And uh, she ends up telling him, you know, to have this, uh, this kind of drone that he can just record a message and it will get back to her. So it kind of, she kind of puts him at ease uh, mm -hmm. in a way, kind of start making a little bit of a bond here. Uh, that's what the dialogue is for. And then like I said, we're off into space. And then we introduce the, the main villain, which is Angelique. Now, like I said, that's right there. That second panel is absolutely one of my favorites. I, I yeah, love what really Alice good. did on this. And like I said, the colors from uh, from from How are just fantastic. Oh, we got Zade in the house. What up, Phil? Yo, Phil. You're joining us, brother. So yeah, and then I love like you know the the uh, that bottom panel there's the the ship having this disturbance and trying to figure out what it is, and then you have like her big debut there in that second panel uh, where she crashes through the uh, the front side of the ship's window, and then you know she faces off with uh, with Breck, uh with uh, Ruka, excuse me, uh, the leader of the uh, the Godless. Uh, you know, Angelique is uh, nice. based based on. Uh, say like a cross of like uh she's like an amazonian mixed with like a thanagarian uh you know her, her personality is kind of like uh like a basically like a madeline prior type uh you know she she she's she's very kind of headstrong and, and she's driven by vengeance and pain from her past mm -hmm. and she's kind of uh you know basically someone who's willing to do whatever it takes to 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 get her revenge in the end and she she needs the armor for that uh so does she use those wings to attack or are they just flying wings oh no she's gonna be using them in a minute <laughs> uh, yeah <Cool. laughs> see right there uh oh, yeah. you know, raise Ask the, uh, and you shall receive. yeah right there and uh, the first of the uh, godless goes down uh yeah so right there she's right from the jump she you see her power uh, she's facing off and then she ends up, I love the little like projectiles thing that she does here. Uh, you know, making them like, uh, what, so they're clearly, they're not feathers. They're like, uh, no, she, uh, some sort of substance. Yeah. She, she, she can shoot. Yeah. Like she can control those wings and very much kind of like Archangel can, uh, they're basically, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. uh, I haven't gotten into the whole story, but she's got like an attachment on her back. And it's bonded basically to her skeleton. So she basically yeah. controls it like she would control her fingers or anything else. It's basically like a part of her. So yeah, she's uh she basically uh you know, she's not there to play around. She starts you see uh Breck right there shows up with a big gun, but again, Desi trying to take her down, but those wings can't get past them. Then you know. You see uh thing about David here is like, you know. He's basically had the armor for six months and he's only basically used it to beat up like some street criminals. And then he faced off against the Kula. So, you know, he, he kind of knows his place in there. He knows these guys are soldiers. So he, what he does, he smartly grabs uh, Rico and he brings him to the back to make sure that he's safe. You know, while, while, uh, you know, Breck and Desi are throwing down with Angelique and just little kind of things of like, you know, what, what the character is. He's not some like, you know, total like badass superhero yet you know he, he's, this, he's this young man learning his powers and you know he'll throw down when he has to but you know he, he's also very smart and yeah. he's good about picking on his it's, feet yeah that's i like that i've got the same character ella's pretty much the same character where she's new to this whole thing so it's dumb it's very ray skywalker <laughs> to have them <laughs> just just land, you know, out in front, uh, running, kicking everyone's ass. It, it feels really forced. So I like that too. 
Yeah, gotta, otherwise, it. it's not you gotta you gotta see them grow. You gotta you gotta uh, you know that's how they become the hero. You put them in a situation where they have to step up eventually. And uh, you know each book, you know, has his own challenges, and and you know each you know scenario is gonna smart him up for for what he needs to do in the future. So mm-hmm. we see Angelique taking out Breck right there, and then you know. Damn. She uh, ends up facing off with uh, Ace, and I love like the little kind of moments here. Like she's basically uh, trying to seduce him. You know, she's basically once she's face to face with him, you know, she she kind of gets a little kind of into the, the armor. You know, that this armor has a long history uh, throughout the, mm-hmm. this universe, and it's got uh, <coughs> you know, it's some people hate it, some people love it. And you can tell Angelique here is just really kind of digging the armor and the power, and she she's kind of into that. And you know, Ace is kind of thrown thrown off by that at first. He can't really figure out what she's trying to do. And then you know, Rico right here, uh, ends up basically telling her that she started a war between her people and the godless, and then she ends up basically murdering him, which is just completely uh. It's completely messed up, but but also shows one her power, to her ruthlessness, and the idea that you know this is like a serious situation, and uh, you know, like I said, Desi. She's like, like, I like you. How about if I just kill all these people who you're hanging yeah. out with right now? Would Maybe you like what that? If, what if I'm <laughs> the only one left? You know, exactly. Yeah. Then you'll then you have to be with me. You have to. Yeah. Then you see, uh, Ace gets caught here. You see, like the uh, experience and like technique and and you know like battle experience she she's a trained warrior since she was a child so she has several advantages over him in battle mm-hmm. yeah uh, you know she ends up getting the best of them uh, but then she ends up you know playing with her food a little too much uh yeah respect so, the suit bitch you gotta so she lets her guard down for a second ace is able to use the uh his blast from his uh is uh where the symbol is uh you know you saw that actually in volume one so you know what he can do and uh, i like the fact there he basically lulls her to sleep and then he ends up taking her out <laughs> you know they say uh equal rights equal lefts uh you know <laughs> <laughs> so you know uh, cool as a, our cool as a guy who got, got punched in the face uh this you know this time angelique goes yeah. down you know there's so, videos yeah. that you see out there where they're just going crazy for five minutes, just yeah. wilding out. And then the guys just had enough. You know, they're just hitting him and going nuts. And then he's just like slap. Now we got some new people in the chat. Belmont Press. Thank you, brother. Got a hyper wizard in the, in the house. Yo. Thank you. Let's see what Shane is saying here. Hard part fitting the story all in an imaginable amount of pages and making sure it flows correctly, not getting too much or too less info balances key. Hell yeah. Kind of learned that every time you write, you know, like uh, an experience I had. Is, uh, well, I love volume one. I felt it could have benefited for a couple more pages towards the yeah. end. So I definitely, when I wrote two, I made sure that I got everything in that I wanted. It didn't matter what the page count was. You know, I wasn't going to leave anything on the table. And I think it made volume two better because of that. So, yeah, I think a good, I think a good follow-up should have enough meat on the bone that anything you raise, any questions you raised, you don't have to answer them in the second issue, but at least address them. At least, you know, give the reader something to kind of chew on is a good idea. So, I mean, I do the same thing and, Friggin' paint to death is close to a hundred pages, which is wow. killing me. But you know, it is what it is. <laughs> and you see, uh, right here, Desi, uh, you know, mourning her her comrades in battle. Mm-hmm. You know, the story has to continue. She's a she's a soldier, so she the the mission isn't over yet. Just because the uh, her her buddies are dead, she's got to still get Ace back to uh back to her home planet. You see, uh, David takes care. She's Angelique. gone. She's gone. Nine eye. She's uh, she's having a little nap. And then right here at the end, uh, they uh, see the wormhole, 
and this is going to help uh, get them closer to the next adventure. And that's how we leave off uh, volume two. Nice. Yeah, like I said, we'll touch on the uh, the epilogue and the uh, the Akula origin on another episode of these. Uh, we do this every two Wednesday, every two Sundays, excuse me. So uh, we won't do uh, an episode next week, but we will do one the following after. And like I said, I've been really having a lot of fun with these and, uh, you know, kind of giving everybody uh, some of my process, talking to other people, mm -hmm. explaining their process. So, yeah, it's uh, it's just been a, a real blast here. It sounds like we have very similar processes, actually. I work from a synopsis as well. And because I'm the artist, that means I don't have to break synopsises down. I can just work straight from that, script out from that build panels and pages directly off that whereas uh working with rod I actually have to make a script which is far and away the more time consuming thing uh because i i've watched i sort of i watch the scenes in my head and i commit them to memory and then i write them down as a synopsis so i can go back at any time i want so i know what i see in there but obviously rod doesn't so you know typing out okay in this scene in this panel they have to be doing this this and this that's all like oh man <laughs> that's hard for me <laughs> i've never done that before yeah the uh you know that's to me that's that's like a, an ongoing process you know like that that script will go through so many revisions by the time it gets yeah. to uh, my letter that it's it's crazy uh the main thing is just feeling confident about uh you know each page and how it's laid out because you could always tweak anything that doesn't hit a hundred percent. Somebody else in the chat, BA Turner. Thank you, brother, for joining us. Yo, happy Easter to everybody. We got Pell Rider in the house. I'm, I'm waiting for. Man, I hadn't seen Pell Rider in ages, and now I'm seeing him everywhere, and it's great. Right. He uh, he mm -hmm. won one of the uh, pieces on the big uh, great wheel giveaway. That's awesome. Congrats. So, yeah, Bancroft, why don't we talk about this bad boy here? You got the uh, sign up for the Lucent Painted boy. Death. You know, it's <laughs> at almost 100 pages. This is, uh, oh, it's getting series, bigger, huh? too. <laughs> it's <laughs> getting bigger, too. Well, it's because it's a sequel. Like you, like we said earlier, it has to be, I didn't say a little more complicated, sophisticated. I find that sequels mm -hmm. should be a bit more sophisticated. You don't have to set up the world anymore you have to expand on the world you you're going to meet more people uh so i have we're in the first book i didn't really have subplots it jumped around a bit but that's only because people can't see the bigger picture yet that comes that comes later that'll sort of all come into view but in reality it was just sort of one thing that was happening whereas in painted death there's three or four subplots moving together and it's sort of, you know, the intertwining and jump backing uh, back between them. But, uh, you know, essentially, you know, in this, in the, it, it lose waking dream and painted death, uh, will combine to be one sort of big introductory arc for the Lucent. Um, so I think by the end of painted death, people will, come away with it feeling a lot more satisfied with the story that they get than even though they they liked waking dream you know it, it sort of appeared like a cliffhanger um it, you know, even though it was 60 pages the way i paced these things it didn't f feel like it was super dense so uh, i think you know anyone who was intrigued by the mystery of waking dream will really have a lot to chew on in uh in this one yeah that's uh we have the uh, link to the sign up on the uh description uh as well as links to you know bankrupt's youtube channel uh his uh website uh you know bankrupt is doing a lot of things you can go uh check him out mm -hmm. and support all his stuff yeah man, this is comic.com looks very very beautiful i like the uh the panel down here yeah man that color palette the blues and the yellows and everything that was a absolute nightmare to work out yeah. but i'm happy that i did 
And anyone who's read The Lucent knows the story spans, goes all the way back to the very beginning of friggin' civilization and before. So there's, you, you don't ever, you never know what, what exactly you're going to find in there. Is it going to be set in 2000, 3000 BC? Is it going to be set 2000 years ago? There's going to be, I mean, the majority of the book is set in the present. It's not a, it's not a book about the past, but you know, the past matters in the book. Um, so very, very quick rundown what's happening in this book. Essentially, Ella has exposed herself to this world out there of, uh, the Lucent, essentially, who are now very much aware of her and very interested in her. So in Painter Death, they're essentially hunting her down and she is going to have to uh, confront that, essentially, even though she doesn't really... She's, she's completely... you know, Up until then, she'd be completely oblivious to this whole thing. So it's... Yeah, it's going to be a bit crazy for her. Uh, do you have, like, a timetable uh you know expected time where the the full thing will will launch yeah originally i was actually going to launch the end of this month um and i'm glad i pushed that back because i decided that i want to do hard covers after getting uh what's it called um kids and monsters by adam lawson it's like oh, i want that i want that because you know, it was originally inspired by european bun designate which are large format hard covers i'll still be i'll still be offering the the normal cover at this at the same price but the hard covers will be bigger a little bit more expensive so I've, now i find i've got to do four covers instead of just the one so um the plan is end of june that i'll be going live with this uh that, by that time i'll have all the covers done i'll have a lot more of the actual books done as well i saw a question here from shane he said to doing a sequel did any fans or cri critics point anything that made you change any direction character development the story in general yes absolutely so um a lot of people you never know who, who they're gonna sort of like and who they're gonna like less so um a lot of people said they're really intrigued by my villain which is which was came as this really shocked me because he he actually doesn't appear too much in the book, but they were intrigued by him. So that spurred me on to add in an extra scene that I think really improves Painted Death. And it's only four pages, but I think it really makes the whole thing so much better. And, and it gives those readers who were really intrigued by him something, you know, cool and fun to... Uh, dig into there were other criticisms about well you know we didn't really care about this guy at this point so having a big long scene about him doesn't really hit emotionally the way i think you wanted it to or um uh, you know just other sort of critiques like that that i've okay so now i need to now i know I, I need to flesh some things out a little bit more stuff like that no major changes but okay we can sort of turn the dials here and there uh, Hyper Wiss has got a question there for you. No, not, not, uh, yeah. So Americans, when they think of a hardcover, they think of, you know, you get those big, uh, Marvel X-Men books where you get all the compiled floppies into a big hardcover. That's not what I'm thinking at all. I'm literally thinking, uh, you know, books like this is what I'm trying to emulate uh who's doing it now um eric canetti with arc athena you know they're these are 50 page books that are hard covers now mine's going to be 60 and probably 100 so yeah and as well i don't i don't i know i never really was a big fan of the whole i'm going to release my book with four or five variant covers it was never really my thing yeah. um nothing against other people want to do it but if I have one a variant cover, I want it to be a different edition. So if you want the variant covers, there'll be different kinds of books. There'll be hard covers. So I'm, I'm fine with that. Um, that's all I'm going to do. Uh, Pell Rider. Like <laughs> Pell Rider says, Rider's I did a lot of LSD back in the day. So yeah, we <laughs> love the Lucent. <laughs> it's a bit like uh, that. Yeah, you guys, uh, please uh, go sign up for uh, Bancroft's uh, mailing list. Uh, you know, uh, please sub to his uh, YouTube channel, please which do. is, you know, 
easily one of uh, the best uh, channels in this kind of arena. Uh, you know, Bancroft, uh, you know, I give him a hard time, but it's it's all jokes. It's all we're having fun <laughs> with uh, this stuff. But and I appreciate the fact that you, you know, have continued to stay who you are. And, uh, you know, mm -hmm. you continue to give opportunities to people to present their work to the public. You know, yeah, yeah. and I think that's no, and that's what I hope to do in the future, needed. just with a yeah. increasingly larger platform. What wouldn't that be awesome? Um, you know, imagine, imagine guys such as yourself and many, many others could have a platform where they can sell uh, the ace or whatever it is, uh, you know, to thousands of people instead of hundreds. That that's my uh, that's my goal. That's my five year plan. <laughs> that's a, that's a wonderful thing uh but like i said we're gonna start wrapping this up but uh before we do uh just want to remind everybody that uh raid of the white leopard is launching on april 28th uh exclusively on fundmycomic.com uh it's gonna be a really kick-ass uh, book it's got some uh, vikings it's got some pirates it's got all sorts of uh, fun interesting things that don't exactly go together at first glance but when hopefully when everybody gets it in their hands and reads it the, they'll kind of start seeing the 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 full story get together uh you know my idea is to put out at least three books of it of like a big overarching story basically book one's the beginning book two would be the middle and book three would be the end and yeah, we're trying to fund my comic.com to, to try and get some spot on it. I think it's a great new resource for, for uh, yeah. up and coming creators. Uh, just personally speaking, you know, the layout is super simple. It's so much easier, less headaches than Indiegogo. Uh, you know, you can actually talk to somebody if you have questions. You know, I had a couple of <laughs> questions. I need Imagine answer. that. Yeah. Uh, you know, I got, I reached out to Luke and company and they, they got me my answers pretty quickly. Uh, so yeah, man, uh, I'm excited for, for this launch. Uh, it's got incredible artwork by Avery Butterworth. I think he's, you know, doing next level stuff. And I think, uh, when people yeah, man, see it, it in, in their glory, it. right. Awesome cover by Donald. Uh, you know, like I said, all the, the links are in the description of the video. Please uh, sign up for the mailing list. It'll get you a discount on the comic and yeah, we'll be going live on Bancroft. You know, it's uh, it's scheduled for 9 15 PM Eastern. So, so we'll see. That's a test. You know, I don't know if they've, if uh, Fun My Comic has done any actual launches on the clock. So, you know, that yeah, button, this will be it. I just did my <laughs> first Kickstarter launch yesterday, and that went, yeah, so. that went fine. So, we'll see my first Fun My Comic launch. We'll I'm see hoping, you know, I'm hoping when it when it hits, everything just goes up automatically, or or it's gonna be a. So we have to we have to time to... it. We have to time it so it at exactly at nine fifteen is when the countdown ends. I think I can do that. I, all yeah, you need to know is that's how the it plan. Exactly so, that is. You know, I'll be uh, you know, fingers crossed, everybody. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Pell Raider I'm says that uh, to YouTube um, subbed him from you. Wow. Yeah, yeah, he told me about that a while ago. That's super it's, shady. Come on, it's YouTube doing YouTube. The Rumble's going great though uh awesome. rumble is growing we had nearly actually nearly no i wouldn't say nearly as many but well over half the amount of people watching yesterday at, at one point on rumble as there were on youtube so that you know that's cool Damn, that's uh, awesome. it's interesting to see how that grows the more kind of eyeballs that they get on it the smoother their layout and everything gets you know i think mm -hmm. we're finally going to see like a real alternative to youtube because they're just there's a lot of shady stuff that happens with uh, with YouTube. Yeah, I, I, you know, I've I've got 470 odd subs over there, and lo and behold, I get about 300 people watching the streams. Isn't that you know what yeah. it probably you would expect? Whereas on yeah. YouTube, you know, it doesn't. You'll see people with a million subs who get a couple thousand people watching the streams. It's like, well, they're obviously not getting notifications or whatever. Yeah. Like, uh, um, I have a uh, my pro wrestling channel's got like 9,100 subs, and mm -hmm. you know, the amount of traffic they it basically gets throttled. If I start having like a video do well, you know, the moment I post another one, that one will get throttled, and then I have to like mm. give it some time and then post like a month later for, for it to get get traction again so who knows with a little tick 
uh, tricks and tips are for that. But just for a cursory view, uh, you know, it seems a lot of kind of weird stuff that goes on if you're if you're like a content creator. Definitely. All right, so we're going to be wrapping this up. Uh, any final words, Bankrupt? Uh, LucentComic.com. That's where that's going to be my hub from now on for all things Lucent. Uh, you know, you can sign up to the mailing list there. I, you know, I'll take it Indiegogo. Go. You can, I'm going to start adding more information about other books. I've got Fractured Mind that will be eventually coming up. I told you about my uh, Viking Wizard book the other day. That's way <laughs> in the future, but that sort of stuff will be coming uh will be you know a first appearing on that site so eventually i hope to i know like, i really like how reenie's built this kind of fiendish hub over on yeah. fiendish comic doc i want to try and build something like that that also crowdfunds and is a shop as well slowly building it up though that's great so yeah like i said all the links are in the description for anybody who wants to check out anything i'm doing i got my etsy store all that fun stuff everything bancroft's doing uh so yeah like i said we'll be back in two weeks for episode eight of the writer's cut thank you everybody who came and joined us tonight it was a fun discussion and yeah we'll see you in a couple of weeks have a good night everybody bye <laughs>